Adventurous kids explore with education and learning what a wildlife is in the Everglades. I want to explore the museum of discovery science. What plants do butterflies like? I want to know about Key West. Adventurous kids learning and fun. Adventurous kids. Today I'm going to tell you about Joro spiders. The Joro spider is a species of golden orb weaver spider native to East Asia. It is found throughout China, Japan, except Hokkaido, Korea, and Taiwan. The Joro spider was likely brought to the United States via shipping containers in 2013 and has become an invasive species with thriving populations in some states. When this spider is not building its web, it can travel on wind currents on a string of its own silk. The Joro spider shares its name with a folkloric spider demon. In Japanese culture, Joro spiders can live for about typically 12 months. The adult female Joro spider is large and brilliantly colored with bright yellow and gray-blue bands and patterns on both its upper and lower abdomen. The cephalothorax is covered with silvery and golden hairs and the legs are black with yellow bands. The most stunning feature of a spider is its size. A female Joro spider body length can measure up to one inch with leg span up to four inches. To put that into perspective, the average size of a human palm is 3.1 to 3.5 inches. Females lay eggs in the fall. There can be up to 1,500 eggs. Dang, boy! That's a lot of eggs. In a thick walled sack, covered in bright yellow silk, baby Joro spiders hatch in the spring and look like smaller versions of their adult counterparts. Male Joro spiders are much smaller and not as vibrantly colored when compared to females. Their body length is typically 0.3 inches with more dark brown colors. A Joro spider's diet includes a variety of insects such as mosquitoes, stink bugs, yellow jackets, and biting flies. They wait until a small insect gets tangled in their web. Once it's inside, the spider wraps the prey in silk, uses the venom to subdue it. Draw spiders are typically food for birds and other predators that eat spiders and insects. Since these spiders are fairly new to the U.S., their role and impact on the ecosystem remains unclear. Their native habitat in Japan, the life cycle of Joro spiders follows the steps. The cycle seems to be roughly the same for the North American population. The eggs survive in cocoons during the winter. The eggs hatch to produce spiderlings in June. The male spiderlings are mature by August. Females become mature in September and early October. After mating has occurred, the fertilized eggs are now laid in late October and November. By late November, the adults have died. The spider is an introduced species of northeast Georgia and northwest upstate South Carolina and North America. It is an invasive species, meaning that it is not a native animal to the place where it lives. They were first spotted in Atchison, Georgia in 2013. Since then, they have been spotted in numerous locations in Northeast Georgia, including the Athens, Georgia area, and also in Greenville, South Carolina. Scientists confirmed the first known occurrence of Joro spiders in North America in 2014 and as of October 2022, Joro spiders range spans at at least 46,000 square miles occurring across the U.S. state of Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee with additional reports in Alabama, Maryland, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. The Joro spider is expected to be in the southern portions of the New York state and surrounding states 
sometime in summer of 2024. According to a June 5th CBS article, the Joro spider has been spotted in the U.S. states of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, North and South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, Ohio, According to CBS, the Joro spiders seem to be okay with living in a city, said University of Georgia researcher Andy David, adding that he has seen the Joro spiders on street lamps and telephone poles. How are Joro spiders moving around the United States? Joro spiders use two primary methods to move around. One method is by hitchhiking with humans, winding up in cargo shipped around the world and finding their way to new lands. The other method is through a process called ballooning. Ballooning is when newly hatched spiderlings climb as high as they can, stand on raised legs, and they release several threads of silk from their spinnerets. These thin silk threads act as a parachute of sorts as they're being swept up in air currents. The spiderlings will travel with the wind. You won't see fully grown Joro spiders taking flight. Depending on the species and other environmental factors like wind speeds, ballooning may carry spiderlings from tens to hundreds of miles away. Current estimates only have Joro spiders being moved from bordering states to no more than 80 miles from where they're originally found. That's roughly about 8 to 10 miles per year so far with their long banded legs and abdomens. These spiders may seem intimidating but they're not dangerous to people. Joro spiders are venomous but their venom is weak and their fangs can't break human skin. They are not considered aggressive and they're more likely to flee if their webs are disturbed. If they do bite, it's usually less painful than a bee thing, and any pain or redness should go away quickly. Burrow spiders are also unlikely to go inside homes. Burrow spiders will only often attempt to bite if they are being constrained. There are many ways to prevent spiders from entering your home. There are a few. Keep a tidy home. Don't leave food out that will attract other insects, in turn attracting spiders. Vacuum up spider webs on a regular basis, seal up any cracks or entry points in your home, keep up with landscaping, don't keep plants or vegetation directly against your home. Thanks for watching this Adventurous Kids episode. Yeehaw! What did you learn today? Adventurous Kids. Adventurous Kids. What was the most interesting fact? Adventurous Kids. Adventurous kids! Adventurous! Adventurous.